Madam President, I rise today to continue an effort to honor the 198 North soldiers, sailors, and airmen who gave their lives while serving in the Vietnam War. Together with the Bismarck High School uh, history and English classes, we are reaching out to families and friends of these fallen service members and sharing a bit about each one on the floor of the United States Senate. Today, I want to start by talking about a large family, the Getsons, who lost one of their own in Vietnam, but continue to serve our country and our state. Bill and Mary raised 17 children on a farm outside Glen Allen. It was on their farm that their children learned the importance of hard work, dedication, and bravery. After serving in the Army in World War II, Bill married his sweetheart, Mary, and they had 15 children. Jean Geetzer, Geetzen served in Vietnam in the Marine Corps Alpha Company, 1st Battalion, 7th Marine. Jean was born March 19, 1950. On May 21, 1969, he died as a result of wounds received on a company operation. He was 19 years old. Jean's twin brother, Glenn, and older brother, Russell, were also stationed in Vietnam for a time while Jean was there. Once when Russell and Glenn's battalion passed through Jean's camp, they had an opportunity to spend the night together. That night, the young men learned of the birth of their youngest brother, Fred. While the brothers said goodbye, Jean told them that he would never get to see baby Fred. Glenn and Russell told him that they would see him soon and that he needed to stop being so pessimistic. A few weeks later, they learned of Jean's death. Glenn escorted his twin brother's body home. Russell, the oldest child, served three tours of duty in Vietnam with the Army as an interpreter and participated in several covert missions. Russell had two sons who served our state and country in the North Dakota National Guard. Glenn also served in the Army in Vietnam. Glenn started the Injured Military Wildlife Project of North Dakota, which gives wounded veterans nationwide opportunities to hunt and fish in North Dakota. Mark, their other brother, joined the Marine Corps and served all around the world on embassy duty. Greg served with US Special Forces for 37 years. Jim joined the Army and was stationed in Germany for two years. Aaron served 22 years with Army Special Operations as a combat medic. He now trains a new generation of Army medics at the US Army Special Operations Command in Fort Bragg, North Carolina. The rest of the children have served as nurses, missionaries, or have kept up the tradition of family farming. North Dakota is proud to be home of this, the home of this inspiring family. Now I want to talk about more North Dakotans who, like Jean, gave the ultimate sacrifice while serving our country during Vietnam. Gerald Jerry Decker. Jerry was from Sentinel Butte and was born June 17, 1948. He served in the Army's 25th Infantry Division. Jerry died on April 10, 1969. He was 20 years old. Jerry was one of seven children and the youngest of three boys. Jerry and his brother Ron were both stationed overseas at the same time, Ron running supplies from Thailand and Jerry as a cook in Vietnam. Jerry chose to enlist so that he could serve his country and return to the family farm and ranch as soon as possible. Jerry intended to eventually take over the farm. His sister Rose recalls how much Jerry loved farming, loved the animals, and loved training his dogs to hunt. After his death, Jerry's brother Ron escorted his body home. That night after Jerry's funeral, their brother Tom had to appear before the draft board, but he was excused from service. Rose remembers Jerry as the kind of guy everyone loved, even though he had a very dry sense of humor. She says that during Jerry's funeral, their church was overflowing with people mourning Jerry's death. Norman Emineth. Norman was from Baldwin and was born June 13, 1949. He served in the country's 25th Infantry Division. 
Norman was 20 years old when he died on May 22, 1970. Norman and his four siblings grew up on a farm outside of Baldwin. He spent his childhood working on a farm, picking rocks, and milking cows. In his free time, Norman enjoyed hunting, fishing, and spending time with their neighbors. In 1961, the singer Sue Thompson recorded a song called Norman. His friends poked fun at Norman, but despite the teasing, Norman loved the song. He bought the record and listened to the song over and over until he had memorized all of the lyrics. To this day, his sister Elaine can still hear the song in her head. Elaine cherishes the time she spent with Norman when he was home on leave from Vietnam. She said that during this time, she felt like the kids had finally become adult friends instead of bickering children. The siblings all wish that they could have spent time in their adult years with their brother, Norman. Lawrence Esser, Jr. Lawrence was from Minot. He was born February 21st, 1948. He served in the Army's 9th Infantry Division. He was 21 years old when he died on March 12th, 1969. Lawrence was the oldest, or was the fourth of eight children, and his family and friends called him Junior. His sister Darlene has fond memories of playing together outside making mud pies. She says that from the time Lawrence was a child, he loved to build things and work with his hands. He attended a trade school and worked for his brother-in-law in a construction firm. Lawrence's family remembers him as a humble and quiet person. His mother, who died when she was 98 years old, still had a hard time speaking about Lawrence until her own death. Joseph Joe Fisher. Joe was from Zealand and was born September 11, 1948. He served in the Army on the USS King as a boiler technician. Joe died on May 23, 1969. He was 20 years old. When Joe, Joe was very young, his mother passed away. During middle school, he began living with Ben and Laura Junt, Jund of Zealand. Joe and his foster family grew very close. Joe's high school friend, Ann Welder, remembers that Joe was kind of a class clown and participated in baseball, basketball, football, drama, and pep club. Anne and Joe's foster family believes everyone who knew Ju Joe enjoyed being around him. After his high school graduation, Joe enlisted in the Navy. He enjoyed his Navy serve service very much. The day after his foster family learned that Joe had died, they received a note in the mail sent to them stating, I just thought I would let you know that I'm still alive. Wendell Keller. Wendell was from Fargo and was born May 19, 1934. He served in the Air Force's 433rd Tactical Fighter Squadron. Wendell was 34 years old when he went missing in action on March 1, 1969. Wendell's parents were Raymond and Leona Keller and his siblings are Virginia Post, Ray Keller, and David Keller. In addition to his siblings, Wendell is survived by his wife, Jacqueline, son Gregory, and his wife, son Gregory and his wife, Patty, and stepson, Andy, and son, Michael, and his wife, Janie, and their daughter, Linda. While at North Dakota State University, Wendell married, uh, majored in electrical engineering and graduated with an Air Force ROTC commission. Wendell was an accomplished pilot. In 1959, he was selected to fly over the first U.S. Air Force Academy graduation ceremony. In 1968, Wendell volunteered for an assignment in Southeast Asia, rather than accepting the recommendation to become a Thunderbird pilot. On March 1, 1969, Wendell, an Air Force major at the time, was the flight commander of a night strike over Laos. It was his 80th mission, and he made multiple passes before his plane was struck by anti-aircraft fire and crashed in the rugged terrain. Search and rescue efforts to locate him were unsuccessful. He was declared missing in action and was promoted to lieutenant colonel. Fifteen years later, the crash site was discovered, and after several ground searches and evacuations in, in 2012, 
His remains were identified, and he was buried in Arlington National Cemetery. The Air Force issued Lieutenant Colonel Keller medals to honor his extraordinary service, including the Distinguished Flying Cross, the Air Medal with four oak leaf clusters, and the Purple Heart. Stanley Otmar. Stan was from Mott and was born October 26, 1949. He served in the Army's 1st Cavalry Division. Stan died April 10, 1969. He was 19 years old. His family called him Stan, and he was the third of seven children. His sister, Mavis Jarnigan, or Mavis Otmar, was my college roommate when we were at UND and remains a good friend of mine today. Their father served in World, in World War II in the Army. After high school graduation, Stan followed in his father's footsteps and enlisted in the Army, where he joined the parachute training program. Stan was a friendly and social person who had a love and talent for music. His sister Sharon has fond memories of Stan at home, standing in front of the mirror, watching himself play his guitar and sing. The family cherishes the recordings that they have of him singing and playing the guitar. Stan died with just two weeks left in his tour, and he was already making plans at that time to buy a new car. John Renner. John was from Mandan, and he was born June 24, 1949. He served in the Marine Corps Hotel Company, 2nd Battalion, 26th Marines. He was 20 years old when he died. July 28, 1969. John was one of three kids. His sister Mary lives in Mandan, and his brother Tim lives in Arizona. Mary remembers John as a happy, nice person who was always smiling. He was never unkind to a soul. John was killed just over two months after beginning his tour of duty in Vietnam. After John died, his brother Tim joined the Marine Corps. Tim was not sent to Vietnam, but felt he owed it to his brother to join the military. John's fellow soldiers remember him as a brave and good friend. He is deeply missed by all who knew him. Virgil Greeny. Virgil is from rugby, and he was born November 26, 1930. He served as a major in the Army. He was 33 years old when he died September 25th. 1964. Virgil served our country for over 12 years prior to his death, including service in Korea and Ethiopia before he volunteered to go to Vietnam as an advisor. Virgil had made the military into a career, but he had a passion for mathematics. Virgil's dream was to become a math teacher after he retired from the Army. The day Virgil died, a Vietnam soldier threw four grenades into his vehicle. The third grenade exploded inside the truck, killing Virgil. Virgil left behind his young wife, stepchildren, and a daughter. Robert Bob Sim. Bob grew up in Velva and Tolna and was born on December 10, 1939. He served in the Army's 2nd Cavalry Division in what was called Gary Owens Regiment. Bob was 27 years old when he died on October 23, 1967. His siblings are John, Richard, and Marilyn. His parents both worked in education. Bob grew up in Velva. His senior year of high school, the family moved from Velva to Tolna, where his father became the superintendent of schools. Bob was tall and was talked into joining the basketball team at Tolna, where he played just for the fun of it. Bob's cousin Jean remembers that Bob liked 1950s rock and roll music, and he always combed his hair like Elvis Presley. After graduate, graduating from Tolna High School, Bob enlisted in the Army. In the Army, Bob met Lieutenant Bob Tremble, who became his company's executive officer. The two men had confidence in each other on missions and enjoyed spending their free time together. Lieutenant Trimble remembers Bob's great sense of humor even when the times were tough. He was with Bob when Bob was killed and says that day will always haunt him. Thomas Tom Spitzer. Tom grew up on a farm south of Wilton and was born June 17, 1941. He served as a Navy pilot. Tom was 20, 
five years old when he died on October 26, 1966. Tom is survived by his siblings, wife, and his son, Tom, who was born just a month after his father was killed. In high school, Tom and a friend began flying. He then attended North Dakota State University where he participated in ROTC and re received a degree in business administration. During his Navy training, Tom was designated a Top Gun graduate. His brother Jeff says that it was the proudest moment of Tom's life. The Navy intended for Tom to stay in the United States to train other pilots, but Tom volunteered to go to Vietnam to serve his country. As a Navy pilot in Vietnam, Tom flew over 100 missions. One of those missions involved him flying over his wing commander who had been shot down to draw fire away while they waited for help to arrive. The Navy awarded Tom with distinguished medals in recognition of his heroism. Donald Donnie Vollmer. Donnie was from Bismarck. He was born August 2nd, uh, 1950. He served in the Army's 1st Aviation Brigade. Donnie died on November 2nd, 1969. He was 19 years old. Donnie had three brothers and one sister. He enjoyed hunting and fishing in his free time. Donnie decided to join the Army because his older brother, Jim, was enlisting and he wanted to go too. At the time, Donnie was 17 years old, so his parents had to give permission and Donnie had to finish his GED while at basic training. Donnie and Jim served in the same unit and Donnie was a helicopter crew chief. A few weeks before Donnie was killed, he and Jim came home on emergency leave because their mother had a heart attack. Donnie spent his time at home telling his friends how much he loved serving his country. Jim's tour was almost over, so he was allowed to stay home, but Donnie returned to Vietnam alone. Jim believes that if Donnie had not been killed in the war, he would have made the Army his career. Robert Brayton. Robert was from Mohall. He was born February 14, 1947. He served in the Army's 1st Infantry Division. Robert died on, no on February 27, 1969. He had just turned 22 years old. His two sisters were Beverly and Aud uh, Audrey, and his brother's name was Bernard. Even though he was Robert's younger brother, Bernard joined the Army during the war just to help protect Robert. At one point during their service, Robert and Bernard were both hospitalized in Washington State being treated for rut rot, foot rot, but didn't learn that they were in the same place until the day after they left. Robert's fa father, Alvin, died of cancer the same year Robert died. Their sister, Beverly, is the last living member of the family. Their mother, Pearl, passed away in 2004, but witnessed the death of three of her children and two husbands during her lifetime. This is the story of just a few North Dakotans and actually just a few of those brave soldiers who were killed in action in Vietnam. And as we continue to participate in the commemoration of the Vietnam War, I believe it is critically important that we continue to honor and appreciate the sacrifice and to help educate the younger generation like the Bismarck High students that are helping me with this project on the importance of sacrifice and commitment to our country.